Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, I'm just going to shoot in another bolo. This one's art-related. Um, the best bolos are the kinds that you actually enjoy selling and finding. Anything art-related, I've either sold, bought, or actually have right this minute. And I'm talking about any area, paints, brushes, any kind of art supply, clay modeling, casting, you name it if it's an art supply, I have it. We're going to talk about pencil sharpeners, and I know that sounds crazy. There's a bunch that go for a lot of money, and there's a bunch that people get mixed up with apple peelers and other things, and a bunch that people just think aren't anything. They're just some weird actual junk. Don't realize it's a pencil sharpener. We're going to cut over the screen, and I'm going to show you some oddball things here that go for some good money. And then there's some more common ones. There's two different tiers. There's the more modern day ones that are like advertising, and then you have the vintage mechanical ones. Let's just go look at some and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first one here. Now this is an insane price on this one, $1,195. This is like a, a hand crank one. It holds the pencil oddly. I think this is like 1870s or something along that line, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it has a date in here early 1900s. I think this one's actually earlier than that, but I could be wrong. I've seen similar ones at museums very similar to this. Um, so anyway, this is just a rare one. People wouldn't even know what this was. I've had people say it's a meat slicer and all kinds of weird things like that. It really doesn't look like a pencil sharpener, so that's why I find some of these. People just don't know what they are. They don't know what to list them at. They'll list them at the wrong thing. It'll be an auction. The auctioneer won't have a clue what this is, so... Let's move on to a couple other vintage oddball looking ones. Here's another one. This one reminds me of some of the cigar like smashers that kind of crunch down the ends and stuff and then clippers, trimmers, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and sometimes you'll run into these. They won't have the base or they'll be missing the cup there or there'll be no um, printed material. All the labels and directions would be gone. So, you know, it, it, it looks kind of odd. You wouldn't know what it was unless you knew it was a pencil sharpener. You know, this is just one of those odd gadgets that most people miss. $400 on that one. We're not going to spend a ton of time on it. You're just going to have to do some research and know something. Um, Al Casco, this is a vintage one. If I'm not mistaken, this one is a vintage. Uh, no, this is actually looks like a newer one. Um, 24 karat gold. Yeah, this one I'll have to look up. I'm not 100% sure, but it, I, I think this one is newer. Wouldn't say 24 gold plated steel if it wasn't. It's made in Spain. But either way, it, it's a well known brand. I've heard of El Casco. Uh, pretty much anything like this, any of the pencil sharpeners at all that look like this, I would buy. The tall ones, the fancy ones, the big boxed ones, the big heavy ones are what you want. Now here's an early Boston, and this is a ball bearing one. Most of the ones you see are the new modern day school style ones that look like this, but they're not ball bearing. This has some really good artwork on it. It's an early one, 325 bucks, and most people wouldn't know the age on something like this. Now I've seen some that actually have glass chambers. This one looks like it's actually like an enameled finish on the back. That would come out and you'd actually dump it, just like a modern day one. This is from 1909 or patent down that date, so it was probably a little after that, 1902 through, say, 1905. Uh, let's look at a couple other ones. Here's another early one. There's, of course, mechanical is just the version that you actually turn the knob, and it actually, or the, the hand crank on the back, and it does it. This is an early example, too, 1910, 20 era. Pretty fancy. It looks Art Deco almost to me. And there's the, the label. The label definitely looks Art Deco to me. It's a really interesting one, honestly. I really like that one. I buy pencil sharpeners, little ones, character ones. One I use pretty much all the time is a Ronald McDonald one from like 1962. I've got a Ghostbusters one from the original one. That's literally what I use. I've got a Big Bird one. And those sell for us for like 20 bucks, but I end up keeping them. I love sharpeners. I have them all over the place because I'm constantly drawing. Um, electric wise, whatever, any kind. You'll see them as pointers. They, they do them in various different shapes, sizes when you do it. So another example, 219. Here's another early example. One of the oddball ones, it's spun around. It kind of reminded me of a lawnmower or some kind of metal weed whacker end on it. To me personally, um, little drawer where everything comes out, instructions on the bottom. Sometimes they won't have the base that can be replaced. It's usually wood. Yeah, it says wood right there. 225. This one, people mix up with apple cores for some reason. I know it kind of looks similar, but it's obviously not what it is. Uh, the pencil lays across the top on the, the wood beam, if I'm not mistaken, and it goes between those two little pegs or something along that line, and then it's sharpened on the other end. 
It's a rather interesting style on this one. 225 on this one, too. Uh, now, here's an interesting one, too, where you can actually see it cutting it. And I liked this one. If I ever find one of these, I'm actually keeping it. Uh, just because I love the, the blade style. It looks like an engine blade or like a, the propeller blade or the engine fins on some of the World War II planes. But anyway, 178 on that one, 13 bids. These aren't unusual prices. These are typical, exactly what you see for this. And the guy's name who's selling is Jeff Roto Tools. So kind of gives you an idea. He sells the kind of rotary devices. And that's what this is, a pencil sharpener's rotary device. Uh, next one here. Now, don't discount these electric ones. I had electric. I've actually got a couple of them because I use them quite often. This is for like a drafter's table. I'll give you a little hint here. This item is a perfect example of a wholesale item. Not, not so to speak, exacto, but an electric commercial grade desktop pencil sharpener will sell wholesale. And you can make some good bucks on it. It's a good flip every day of the week, I promise you. It's a good thing for retail arbitrage. It's a good thing for wholesale in general. So you can sell them on eBay, Amazon, even Etsy, these will sell. So 168, you can look this exact model up or some of the other commercial desktop ones. They always go in the $100 plus dollar range. So anything below that's a good price. I can pick some of these up sometimes depending on the time of the year and the store I'm going to for in the $30 range a piece. So, and then I can flip these with a $100 profit minimum after fees are said and done. Uh, let's see here. Just another one of the Apple style ones. Vintage pencil pointer, Jupiter model is what this one is. It's well collected. 140 on that one. This one I always liked too. This one I thought was neat. Pencil kind of goes across there and, um, and you spin it around as well too. The handle you kind of rotate and it spins it through the, the cycle. There you can go, a little shaver, 140 bucks. It's just a cast iron piece, 1904 it comes from. Now we're going to go into a few of the other ones here. Now this is a Disney, it's a celluloid. It's not technically plastic. It's an early style of plastic. Now most of the early ones like this, the character ones I see are Disney. That was one of the first type of character that had these things. I've seen some other ones like Charles Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin. Um, Laurel and Hardy, um, Three Stooges, there's some real rare ones, but you're not going to find them. The Disney is probably one of the most common early high dollar ones that you will find. Okay, and the next one, another Disney one. Most of them, again, are Disney. You know, celluloid, it's got a wooden stick in it or a handle, I guess, for the umbrella. But there are other characters. If it's another character besides Disney, it's worth a lot more money. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for these items. Most people wouldn't think this is worth 128 bucks. You know, on all honesty, it may be missing the umbrella. Even with the out the umbrella, it's still going to be worth some good money. Pre-war, it's made in Japan. Another one. Now, this one here, this same design you'll see, you'll be able to find this as a tape measure as well, too. It looks almost identical. And there's like a pill case or something that I've seen almost identical to this, too. So the design in general, it doesn't have to be Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, Minnie, any of those early characters you'll find on devices like this. 125 bucks. It is Bakelite, so that adds to the value. This is an interesting one, 1869. Now, I don't know if it's really that old. Um, it's an interesting piece either way. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. This one puzzles me. This one is on borderline whether it was a legit piece or not. I don't know. It's sold as if it was. 10 bids, $103. Uh, let's see here. Hockey puck one. I find the hockey pucks, again, in tape measures or pencil sharpeners, too, just like this. This one's on the package, 250 bucks. The average one, just a loose one, 15 to, say, 60 bucks on average, depending on which one you actually have, so which team that is. A Batman one, still sealed in the plastic. Alco. Now, the brand name I don't think really matters, as long as it's a legit Batman piece and superheroes and the whole works. 100 bucks on that one. So once you get into this area, this is like the modern day era, a lot of these are worth something if they have like a character on it. So that's why I say keep them all. Every one I see, I, I grab. You can get them in bags on savers on the back walls. Uh, most of the, the thrift stores will do them, um, have them in bags too. It's getting harder to find books and stuff because nowadays Goodwill and some of the savers are scanning their own books and sending their own books off for sale. So you're going to have to find other areas. Books are getting harder to get around here. There's no savers, which was the number one source, and Goodwill is scanning all their books here. So I don't have a big source for books, so we're, we're moving on to something else. 
Um, this is $99 for this one, Ninja Turtles, very rare one here as well, I would say. I have not seen this one before, but it's just a standardized version with just the wrap of the turtles on it. You can probably find uh, other ones too. This is a vintage foreign one, so maybe the source is the biggest issue on that one, why it's 100 bucks. Uh, vintage 50. There's cowboy ones. There's space related ones from the 50s. Um, Tom Corbett. Any of the TV ones are worth like 40 or 50 bucks from that era, 1960s or before. The Munsters, Gilligan's Island, anything like that. Star Wars ones go for 10 or 15 bucks. Any sci fi, horror, TV related ones. So I'm just showing you a few. That one was 95. This is 75. Um, this one's made in, I think, Germany. Yeah, Germany. There's Ohio art versions of this, and they're around here. So I run into Ohio art stuff all the time at garage sales if I go on. Um, but this is just another example. This little globe here, 75 bucks. Obviously, the pencil sharpeners on the bottom. You'll see modern day reproductions of these. Even the reproductions go for five, ten bucks on the right day of the week. And then I just have one more. This give you an idea here. You're going to find pencil sharpeners at least every single week if you dig and just look for pencil sharpeners. I do. I find them all the time. And I do mean all the time. You know, in a month I could have 30 or 40 pencil sharpeners so I'm really digging. So, anyway, this is a Hello Kitty. Sanrio is a big company. Anything marked Sanrio I usually look up, no matter what it is, because a lot of it has ties to Hello Kitty. And Hello Kitty stuff sells like mad. So 75 bucks for this little one here. And I think it's just a plastic piece. Nothing fancy, nothing uh, special or anything. It has a little drawer that comes out. Standard Sanrio. Typical time frame, 1976 through, say, 80s and 90s. That's usually what I see for that brand. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.